and our monitor is coming online and it's telling us the CPU our memory has changed please enter your system uh, setup F1 to run setup and F2 to load default values so we'll just grab our keyboard over here USB port and we will press F1 and that brings us to our click BIOS. Um, this particular BIOS you can use your mouse in. Um, you can use your keyboard, your arrows, and your typical settings as such. Um, with this particular BIOS, you can see your temperature here in uh, Celsius. It gives you the date and your version, the time. It tells you the processor that is in it which is the Indium Phantom 2 quad core uh, 955 processor uh, it gives you the frequency and it gives you the current um, RAM the frequency that it is operating at it gives you the memory size and then you can also have your boot uh, such which drive it's going to boot to from and then you have your ECO mode your standard mode and ECO Gen 2 mode uh, which if you're interested uh, you can Google that on the gin mode is really nice. It's uh, just a simple overclock. Push a button and it goes a, a relatively easy uh, overclock. Um, I found on this particular board using a 3.2 using that board with a setup similar to this. It gives you about a 3.7 with no headaches. Just push the button and go. Uh, of course, you need to change the settings in the BIOS here for that to to work. Um, now that we have all this done, uh, we'll turn it off. You don't need to worry about you know, just hitting the on off button because uh, you don't have Windows or hard drive installed, so it's okay. You're just in the BIOS. You can just hit the button here and turn it off. Alright, so we will take all our power supply cords off here and we will put it in the case and I'll show you that build on the next video. Alright, as you can see here. I have removed the uh, power cords on this um, and we're going to get ready to install it into our case. Um, first thing that we need to do before we do install the case is put these little uh, brass things, uh, gold looking things, brass looking things, uh, which are standoffs into the case because you do not want the motherboard uh, directly touching the case because that will uh, short the motherboard out and you will not have a usable motherboard therefore not having a computer so this is what they are they're just these uh, the screw in bit is just going to go into uh, these little holes here which they have them every so often in here alright we're putting the screws in the uh, motherboard here to hold it in against the off stands here offsets So we get done doing that we uh, move on to adding the hard drive and the rest of the components um, you want to make sure that you don't put these in too tight hand tight as soon as it's 
you have to give it any amount of force that's tight a enough and you can move on to the next screw. Um, one thing you want to keep in mind when doing this is you do not want to use a magnetic um, screwdriver. Um, that can bring about many bad things for your motherboard. Alright, and now we will install again the uh, video card. So we'll just move on. Fairly easy as you can see. So you, on this particular case to add and remove. Um, let's take and line that back up. Put that back in. We will grab a screw to put in there. Make that hand tight. There we go. And that will hold that into place. Alright, now on this particular case, you have many slots here for uh, holding your hard drives. Um, these are very nice. You just pinch and remove these. Um, for your two and a half drives, it has screws, screw holes on the bottom here. Screw those in, and then for the three and a half, it has screw holes in the sides here to hold those in place if they're not going to be removed often. And to give us more room to work with, we're just going to go ahead and remove all these. Um, Um, this very top one is probably the most interesting one of them all. This one is the hot swap bay. And I don't know if you can really tell too much, but that is a SATA and power right there. That way you can take one of these and put a hard drive in it and just slip it in and out. There's actually a slot made in the side of the case to go ahead and remove those without having to open up your case each time. And then here's your toolless um, toolless system here for adding your CD-ROMs and whatever else that you might. If you have a fan cooling system that you're going to install or whatever, just open and click those in and they will stay and place. You don't have to screw them in or anything like that. Very nice and convenient uh, setup here. Alright, so now we'll move on to the next step. Um, we'll go ahead and put in our uh, CD ROM. So I'll go ahead and put the case over here. Um, first thing we're going to do is we got to move one of these three spots here and that's